Um, yes, I, I've been asked to give a, a legal perspective on what is being discussed at the moment. And that's a fairly tall order to do in 15 minutes, given the, the, the amount of information you received. But I will try um, to, to at least cast a few thoughts so that maybe in our question and answer session, um, we could perhaps elaborate it on further. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly touch on these three areas. A legal perspective on uh, suicide, what's the law on it? And when we enjoy freedom, do we enjoy it or do we go into a freedom of a wild ass, as we refer it to law? And media coverage, uh, I think it's important because you are looking possibly at a code of ethics that might come soon. Um, is it a legal or ethical question? Is there, is there aiding or in the commission of, of perhaps even suicide or by omission? Are we violating the law? Also, uh, uh, look at ourselves. How many of us, electronic or print, are truly independent uh, in, in our practice of media? And uh, I'll quickly also touch on law, regulation, and ethics. The difference is law, regulation, and ethics. Um, and perhaps even discuss whether by our own inaction or action, whether we have not invited regulation upon ourselves. Um, a brief uh, idea on how laws, I am sure this is nothing new to all of you, but just to set us on the stage, um, you know that we Sri Lankan citizens are supposed to be the absolute sovereign in this country. It is our right to make laws for ourselves <coughs> and this is done uh, in, in, in respect of these three organs of government. The legislative arm which formulates or implement, formulates law, the executive branch that implements that law and the judicial branch that interprets the law. Uh, I've been asked uh, by Shahan maybe to touch briefly in, in Sinhalese also. So, Api Swairi Rajika Jivatanagota, Api Sri Lanka, Apura Vasin, Api Sri Lama Kiena, Api Swadi Patti Bale, Purna Vasin Himi, Sri Lanka, Pura Vasin Kil, Api Niti Sadime Bale, Api Vasta Dayaketa, Niti Kriatma Kiri Bale, Api Vidayaketa, A Niti Kriatma Kavi Media, and Aitika Venama the Kieneka. Api Ape Adikarana Balayat, we see Vashem, Api, Tunakata Bela Venkarana. Then our second Republican constitution, the 1978, I don't know how far that will also remain, but uh, for the moment that's a constitution we are guided by, and that says at Article 10, Vyavasta uh, Dahaya, that every person is entitled to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, including the freedom to have or adopt a religion or belief of his choice. Apita Aiti Akti Nava, Apita Purna Aiti Akti Nava, Api Kamati Dak, Vishwasa Kiri Maho, E Vishwasa Mata Kriya Kiri, me Aiti. Article 14.1a Every citizen is entitled to the freedom of speech and expression, including publication. This is particularly important to those of our friends in the media, particularly when you are looking at this area of uh, regulation or ethics at the moment. Api Siel Dinatama Kata Kiri Meho. Adhas Prakasha Kiri me Aithyat, a Prakasha Kiri me publication marge, him letang publication is Likitava, Likitava, Prakasha Aithyat, Tiana, Vyasta, right? Article 14.1e Every citizen is entitled to the freedom either by himself or in association with others and either in public or private to manifest his religion of belief in worship, observance, practice, and teaching. Now, remember that the Constitution also in its wisdom has certain restrictions on these fundamental rights. Article 15.2 says that the exercise and operation of fundamental rights declared and recognized by Article 14.1a, what I just read, shall be subject to such restrictions. Rajya visinma vyavasthave aitya krandava ginati benava e mam ihataki vyavasthanu aitin restrict karanho eke simavan panavimata as may be prescribed by law in the interest of mokat, monahetun sandhat, in the interest of racial and religious harmony, or in relation to parliamentary privilege, contempt of court, etc., which is not particularly important to us now, or defamation or incitement to an offence. Varada kiri mata thavattaya pelambavim valakti mata mangari hitaki nidahas 
रिस्ट्रिक्ट किरी में हो ये वा आडू किरी में आई थी ना चीन आंध्र वागे ने तीन बनो आर्टिकल 15.7 डी एक्सरसाइज एंड ऑपरेशन ऑफ़ ऑल द फंडामेंटल राइट्स डिक्लेयर रखने के बाद आर्टिकल 14 शैल बी सब्जेक्ट टू सच रेस्ट्रिक्शंस एस में प्रिस्क्राइब बाय लॉ इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ़ नेशनल सिक्योरिटी for the just requirements of the general welfare of a democratic society. For the just requirements of the general welfare of a democratic society. Now, I have censored myself when I uh, printed this uh, slide for you. For the simple reason, I'm trying to make a point. Now, our discussion is also centered around this self simulation if we were to regulate ourselves and if we were to be guided by certain principles and fundamentals which we will not depart no matter what the cost is i know it's very easy to say for me as a lawyer but when you're working in media institutions uh, which have commercial interests also perhaps state interests it may be difficult to do but i am not here to discuss the commercial or other values i am here as a lawyer to say what ought to be what ought to be it may be difficult. But if we censor ourselves, then do we not, not allow anyone else to censor us? That is my question. If we regularly, make a monona tapikaran in a hekila, ehemanang, api venakat, but api were regulate karana was tavak no denavane. This is a question that I'd like to think, I'd like us to discuss later. Then Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Rights, I'm not going to read it all. It's there. I'm sure Sukuma and them can email this presentation to you if anyone's interested. All of these deal with this expression and the freedom of expression. So there are international covenants that we are also bound by that, co that are consonant with our constitution which deal with freedom of expression. Now, for some reason, I know I'm going to have a flurry of questions during question time only. By Act Number 29 of 1998, we have repealed the section that makes suicide an offence. Now, remember, as I said earlier, I belong to the out of the three organs of government, I belong to the judicial arm of government that interprets laws. So, perhaps, if you were to ask why this was done, you must ask that other branch, the legislative branch, where out the people, the intelligent people that you have returned to to legislate for you as to why it was done. So I would not know the reason. But perhaps it is, perhaps, I'm thinking, I, I probably some of you know, I'm not a criminal lawyer, but we do a very boring area of civil, commercial and public law. But perhaps it was done because if you attempt to commit suicide and if you don't die, then possibly you will be penalizing a man for saving himself. By some, I, mean, I, I do not know whether that is the thought process employed by the legislature. You need to ask that from the, as I said, the erudite legislators who have done this in 1998. But for some reason, we have repealed this provision that makes suicide punishable with what it was in the penal code. However, the legislature in its wisdom has retained section 299. If any person commits suicide who abates the commission of such suicide, shall be punishable with death. So now, aiding and abating, as you know, is where you assist or by some coercive force, you assist a person to commit suicide. <laughs> now, the question, once again, for our friends, uh, particularly in the media, is if we try to publicize acts of suicide or if we try to sensationalize acts of suicide, as a possible means of securing an end, then are we not abating if someone else were to thereafter do it? Could the case not be made out against you that you were aiding or abating that commission of suicide? That's a question which, which, we, which we must address our minds to. Then also section 101 is a general provision of commission or omission. You can also be held liable under that provision. Hmm? Then, once again, suicide in India, attempted suicide is an offence punishable under Section 309 of the Indian Penal Code and Section 309 reads thus. Then Section 306 has a similar provision where abating of that commission of the offence is also an offence. Same thing in the United Kingdom. They've had as brilliant legislators as we have. 
they have also decriminalized the act of uh, suicide uh, by act number 19 in 1961 but they also have retained that aiding and abating provision where if someone abates or counsels or procures the suicide of another then that becomes an offense now in the wake of uh, i think this is what the crux of our discussion is this evening in the wake of the reportage of self immolation the speaking to the bbc secretary media minister has indicated a need for an effective mechanism to regulate media and most agree the manner in which this self immolation of a monk was reported echoes the need for such a mechanism i i think most people agree that that should not have been sensationalized but this brings me to a more fundamental question the api ar kolumbu vishwavidyalaya gana ganna kale there was arguably one of the most senior and if not the most senior uh, professor of mass communication professor jb sanayake had a small unit called the journalism unit and if we were doing a major degree in our second year we could do a minor and we could pick journalism and they used to select 25 people and let you do that journalism and one of the first lessons of professor jb ke unit take those days uh, when we were in university as you know all of us are passionate about several issues so you would somehow come try and go for these interviews and get selected for this class and one of the first lessons apidu ganna palavini lesson ne katha me a plus b equals c kene accuracy a plus balance equals credibility now this was one of the fundamentals that we were taught as students of journalism how, how many of us is an open ended question practice this today how many of us try as much as possible to be accurate how many of us try as much as possible to be balanced and how many of us are actually interested in credibility this is a question that we need to ask of ourselves once again going back to the earlier question api accurate nang api kiyana de hari de kiyana ma nang api balanced nang api madhyastha nang ehema nang ape target audience ek api credible hatira salakana but how many of us do it how many of us try to impose our views political or otherwise on our viewers how many how many of us try to pump up certain figures and make them attractive to the public similarly how many of us try to ridicule so many figures so that they are made non attractive to the public these are questions i think we need to ask ourselves not particularly with the self immolation because if we don't you are inviting someone to regulate for you if we don't practice ethics then we will invite someone to take it to that next step which is regulation or perhaps even law i don't think a law is contemplated at the moment i don't think right? it's just regulations but we we may invite it we may invite it so i think we need to think of uh, self regulation and ethics to that extent i think is very important uh now may i refer to this i'm not going to go into detail of it but it is reported that uh, this gentleman uh, committed suicide sometime late then in this case of singharatna tunga versus the state 2001 2 sri lanka law reports the court of appeal held what the press must do is to make us wiser fuller and surer than we are or what we are the press should not think that they are free to invade the privacy of individuals in the exercise of the constitutional right to freedom of speech and expression merely because the right to privacy is not declared a fundamental right of an individual i hope you understand that because our constitution does not declare the right to privacy as a fundamental right of course by implication there are judgments where we have held under article 121 it can be made uh, a fundamental right but merely because we don't have that as of right in the constitution the press should not invade privacy that is what the court of appeal has said it has further held that the law of defamation both civil and criminal is also geared to uphold human beings rights to human dignity by placing controls on the freedom of speech and expression so i leave you with this question ethics and self regulation or do we ask for law ethics and self regulation there is a very rich and happy looking man with a lot of dollars on this side he has regulated himself or there is a very strange looking lady with a sword with a blindfold that's a law that may come after us and in the center of course you will see what we see mostly on several occasions Uh, the law being implemented in its full force let me leave you with this thought uh, by mohandas karmachand gandhi uh, a great man some other i admire much a small body of determined spirits 
such as us, fired by unprincipled faith in their mission, can alter the course of history. Thank you.